Okay. All right, let's give me a demonstration for the um, last parts of the um, one-point perspective uh, letter drawings that we're working on. Um, all right, so just to kind of show you what we're doing or what we're doing to finish up your drawings, I've already kind of started finishing the, starting on the process already. But the last part is we're going to um, shade the, um, the sides of the drawing. This will help to you know, create more of like that 3D effect for the drawings and um, you know, put the, um, uh, you know, add some more three-dimensional effects details to the drawing of that we're doing. So in terms of like the way we'll shade the drawings, and I'll make like a note of it here, but you know, you're gonna go in this direction from, you know, one, you know, from, you know, from the closest to word to going to like towards that vanishing point. And you wanna go in a, um, a light or a dark to light value. Okay, so you wanna go from dark to light. So just for real important though, that's how you wanna typically um, shade the um, drawing. So, uh, you know, just like what we did with your um, practice assignment, you know, we're gonna do the exact same thing. So if you remember from like the practice assignment that we did before, you know, we practiced going from a dark to a light value. So we did with the value scale, then we did in a gradation scale, and then we practiced on the letters itself. So, you know, there was at least like three different instances where we did practices on the drawing itself. So um, definitely should be well prepared to, you know, do this on your project. So. Uh, just to kind of like quickly demonstrate like how you would go about doing it, um, you know, on the final drawing. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, you're going to just uh, shade the drawing. So, um, you know, like right here, I'm just going to start here. So I definitely want to, you know, shade the drawing. So, so we're actually going to do something a little bit differently. Um, I want you to do like a light gray for the uh, entire shape. And try to shade it in the direction of like the letter. So like you see how like this is like curving like an S. If you want it to look really nice, you definitely want to shade it in the direction that it's curving. It's not really too much of an area you're shading. But you know, do it as a light gray first. Very, very light gray. And then you can go darker on the edges. So you know, since it's closer to the letter, I'm gonna go darker here. And then kind of blend it out this way. So in the original practice though, I had you guys just kind of go like dark to light, but I want you to shade it all gray first and then go from dark to light. So there won't be like an actual white space, um, it'd be more of a darker gray. You know, I feel like it pops out a lot better if you do it that way. So shade it lightly with the gray, and then from the direction of the layer, I would just go a little bit darker. Not really too much of a different changes there, but you know, same thing with all layers though, just do a light gray, and then as it's getting closer to the layer, you're gonna shade it darker. And if you have like a transition from like going from like one side to the other, you know, try to keep it consistent between the both the transitions. So you know, this is gonna be obviously be like a dark, dark here. And eventually if you get like dark enough, you know, you might not even have like that outline anymore. So, you know, just take your time with the shading. So this will be pretty much like your final steps for the drawing is just, you know, taking your time shading it. You know, feel free to tilt the paper sideways if it's a little bit easier to shade in different directions. I'll try to shade this with a light gray. So light gray and then you can go a little bit darker. It is a little tricky to shade in the direction of like the letters, but it definitely does add like a little character to like how you're shading. But you know, you could use different techniques though. You can use cross hatching, single hatching, you know, either or is fine. Okay, but yeah, this is pretty much what you do to finish your drawing. So it's gonna take some time, but you know, when you get to the end, it'll, it'll, it'll look nice. So. Okay. So you shade the letters, and then um, if we have time, uh, I may or may not make this extra credit, but uh, I do want us to add the textures to the um, letters itself. So um, now I'm actually not gonna use any of these textures that I have on here. Um, I'm actually gonna just pick out some different ones. So, you know, definitely when you do your final part with the textures and letters, you know, kind of consider also like what textures you're putting in the 
letters itself to you know kind of complement the drawing. So for example, like the word caring, um, you know, I was just looking up some other textures on here. So it might make more sense to have like kind of like a floral you know type of a pattern. Uh, and I think this one looks kind of nice with these really elegant lines and leaves. So I might actually just use that as my uh, my reference. So I'm just having this off the page though, but you know, if I were to kind of repeat this same type of um, floral leaves, or even just having these like kind of really interesting curves too. So I don't have to actually copy this, but uh, I do like these uh, elegant leaves that are being used here. So yeah, definitely if you have time though, you're, you're finished with the shading, you know, feel free to just, just draw some patterns and textures for the other parts. Um, you know, it doesn't really hurt the drawing. In some ways, it can enhance the letters that you guys made. So this is a pretty easy pattern texture that I'm doing. So you could use like the ones that you did for your practice piece, though. But like I said before, it may not go well with like the words because you know you didn't have the words when we did the practice. So um, you know you kind of want to take your time to think about what patterns, textures you might want to use. Kind of like these little floral shapes, leaves. So, so you could do like a pattern. So this is basically a pattern. But if you want to do like a texture, I was thinking of like the word professional though. Uh, I might do like maybe this kind of like metal shiny texture. So uh, let's think something like this along the lines of that. So you can do this with shading, it's a little tricky. So just my suggestion though is if you're gonna do like a texture, then you know, maybe practice it a little. But you know, if I were to kind of create like that same look though, I'm noticing it's having like kind of like a left-right type of a motion with like highlights in certain spots. So you know, if I look at this texture right here, you know, it's kind of like I could do like left-right, but leave some like areas of like white. So. You know, I would kind of do like the same thing. So this is like a little bit more advanced if you want to do something like this though, but you know, it's just a nice little touch that we can add to the you know, drawings and stuff to add a little more detail to it. So it's gonna be a little bit darker there. Because you know, we see a nice little gradation change. I only recommend to do this if you know what you're doing. If not, um, you know, I feel like patterns is pretty easy to stick with. Uh, textures is a little bit trickier because you have to kind of know what you're doing with textures, though. Uh, you know, if I were to zoom in, though, it's kind of creating like that little texture pattern that I'm trying to create. That I'm doing. So, you know, you can kind of see like it's kind of like this to that. All right, so that's if you get done with the shading, but uh, more than likely it'll probably be extra credit though. All right, okay, but you'll finish the shading and then if you finish shading then you can work on some textures and patterns in the word if you have time.